Taiwan. I'm Yvonne Yang with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. We begin in Paris, where Taiwan's weightlifters are looking to raise the bar at the Olympics. They've begun competing with one already meddling in her event. Leslie Liao is in the French capital with the latest. Taiwan now has six medals at the Paris Olympics. Weightlifter Guo Xingchun managed to take bronze in the women's 59 kilogram event on Thursday. She managed to lift 105 kilograms in the snatch, then she lifted 130 kilograms in the clean and jerk, giving her a combined score of 235 kilograms lifted. Guo finished behind China's Luo Shifang and Canada's Maud Sharon, who took gold and silver respectively. During Guo's final lift attempt, she had an opportunity to win the silver medal. Guo could have lifted 132 kilograms to overtake Canada, but she went all in and attempted 137, which would have kept her in gold medal contention with China. Guo is a four-time Olympian and three-time Olympic medalist. She won gold at the Tokyo Olympics and Paris may mark her last Olympic Games. Also in weightlifting, Fang Wanling competed in the 49 kilogram event on Wednesday but did not medal. However, during her competition, she broke Taiwan's national record for a snatch in her category, lifting 86 kilograms. 我跟家人都感觉到非常的开心，我们也很兴奋，因为是在比赛中突破自己。with the addition of Thursday's bronze, Taiwan's official medal tally at the Paris Olympics sits at one gold and five bronze. Howard Zhang, Lian Lian and Leslie Liao in Paris, France for Taiwan Plus. President Lai Qingde is threatening legal action over the gender controversy that has overshadowed a Taiwanese boxer's Olympic run. The Yu Ting's march to the women's featherweight final in Paris has been marked by questions about her biological sex. The controversy started when she failed an undisclosed test by the International Boxing Association in 2023. The IBA was last year stripped of its role as the governing body of Olympic boxing after several scandals. Lai says all athletes deserve a safe and fair environment to compete in the Olympics and has asked the sports administration to look into legal options. They will compete in her gold medal match against Julia Serometa of Poland on Saturday. Japan has issued a mega-quick advisory for parts of its Pacific coast after a magnitude 7.1 earthquake on Thursday. As John Ventrias reports, there's no way to predict whether Thursday's earthquake could trigger another bigger disaster, but officials are urging caution. Thursday's magnitude 7.1 earthquake in southwest Japan has raised fresh concerns about a much bigger disaster hanging over the region's future. Officials are warning another major quake may be on the way. And while they say nothing certain, they've issued Japan's first ever mega quake advisory for the region just in case. ただし、えっと、新たな大規模地震が発生する可能性は平常時と比べると高まっていますけれども、特定の期間中に大規模な地震が発生、必ず発生することをお知らせしているものではございません。え、今後政府や自治体などからの呼びかけ等に応じた。the question is whether this or this earthquake could be the big one. Stretching 800 kilometers off Japan's Pacific coast is a seismically active zone called the Nankai Trough. It can produce earthquakes of magnitude 8 and higher. It's been quiet for nearly 80 years, but there's a 70 to 80 percent chance at least part of it will snap violently in the next 30 years. The predictions for a worst-case scenario are grim. A 2012 estimate puts the dead at over 300,000, dwarfing the 18,000 killed in Japan's 2011 earthquake and tsunami. So far, there's not yet proof of a link between Thursday's earthquake and this future disaster, but officials are still urging caution. 
この地震で揺れの強かった地域につきましてはですね、えー、また同規模程度の地震が起こるかもしれませんのでまず1週間程度特に今後に3日の間、えー、注意いただければと思いますまた南海トラフ地震への影響という意味ではですね For now, officials are calling people under the advisory to fix furniture in place, learn where their nearest evacuation points are, and plan out how to reach them and family over the coming week in case disaster comes. Alex Chen and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. The Philippines Coast Guard is carrying out its first ever drills with neighbor Vietnam in the South China Sea. They're the latest in ongoing exercises between Manila and others in the region as they confront an increasingly assertive China. For more on these collaborations, our reporter Jaime Ocon spoke to Brandon Lee, a maritime security expert with the Anacostia Consulting Group in Washington, D.C. Brandon, this is the first time that the Philippines and Vietnam are cooperating with each other's Coast Guard. How, uh, how significant is that cooperation? I think we're seeing that the Philippines are, this past year, becoming a lot more assertive in establishing its maritime domain. And these partnerships, especially with Vietnam, Vietnam has actually been a pretty weak partner for the U.S. So this is a really great opportunity for the Philippines to fill in that power vacuum and actually engage with countries that we haven't been able to effectively engage with and develop real effective partnerships as the U.S. in that role before. And what can we expect specifically from these drills? What are we going to see them practicing specifically in the South China Sea? Because this is the first type of exercise between these two countries, one of the things that we often see in these first exercises and drills really is kind of getting to know each other. That first thing is to get to know each other as an organization, the leadership structure, how you engage, what the communication patterns are, just really feeling each other out, understanding how the different Coast Guards operate. That includes you know, your personnel, your training, but also your ships. And each of the fleets, each Coast Guard fleet is going to be different. And then once we establish that, really, you're going to be looking at search and rescue, which is the bread and butter of any Coast Guard. These drills are absolutely going to kind of better enhance the cooperation between these two countries. But how much of this do you think is a signal against China, which also has uh, competing claims in the South China Sea? I think that you've seen a lot of, in the past, I would say even as early as late as last year, you did see a lot of activities and engagements with Vietnam and China trying to build and foster that relationship. However, I think Vietnam has become a little more wary of that relationship. So looking to not necessarily shun or push China away, but really develop other partnerships, developing other allies in the area, not just relying solely on China for any protection or any support for the maritime space. So for Vietnam, looking to partner with Philippines is a great opportunity to expand their engagements and partnerships. That was maritime security expert Brandon Lee on the Philippines' joint military exercises in the South China Sea. South Korean authorities say they're investigating a North Korean individual who seemingly defected across the heavily guarded sea border. Initial reports had suggested that two North Koreans attempted a crossing between North and South on Thursday. But the South Korean defense minister confirmed that only one person was picked up by the country's military. Officials in Seoul say they're investigating the individual's intentions in fleeing to the South. A date has been locked in for U.S. Democratic presidential nominee Kamala Harris and Republican pick Donald Trump to phase off in an election debate. The presidential hopefuls would debate on September 10th on America's ABC network, but it's unknown if there will be live audience. Trump previously suggested he would back out of the debate, which was scheduled with President Joe Biden before he dropped out of the race. The Republican candidate says he also wants to debate Democratic nominee Harris twice more that month on Fox and NBC. President Lai ching -de says a range of solutions is needed to address climate change possibly including nuclear energy. Nenyuan以及绝对不是简单的,只是反核或永核的是非题。在国家治理中的每一个决策,势必都是多元的选择题,甚至复杂的多选题。Lai was speaking at the first meeting of the National Committee on Climate Change. 
East Democratic Progressive Party advocates a nuclear-free homeland platform and has worked to decommission Taiwan's nuclear power plants. But Lai has made statements indicating he might be open to keeping some nuclear in Taiwan's energy mix. Environmental Minister Peng Qiming says the committee aims to propose a combination of policy options for adapting the new climate realities. The Defense Ministry has announced that it will purchase new parachutes from the U.S. The T-11 parachutes are the same type in service with the U.S. military and will replace older models currently used by Taiwan. Deliveries are set to be completed by the summer of 2028. Twenty Taiwanese nationals have been caught by the Coast Guard attempting to leave the country in secret. Coast Guard officers doing the safety inspection on the fishing boat found 18 men and two women in a hidden compartment. Among them were at least two criminal sex vets wanted for serious offenses, including causing death and drug-related crimes. The case has been handed over to the Kaohsiung District Prosecutor. A festival celebrating an ancient art of nomadic hunting is drawing crowds to Kyrgyzstan as locals try to keep the tradition alive in the modern world. Rosie Greninger has the story. This marks the start of a traditional nomadic hunt as participants enter this arena in Kyrgyzstan on horseback. But this hunt is not real. It's a reenactment at the Salbron Festival that's celebrating the age-old techniques once used in Central Asia. Salbron is a Kyrgyz name for ancient way of hunting. This way of hunting consists of three parts. Eagle hunting with birds of prey, Taigan dogs, it's fast dogs that go for hunting with Kyrgyz, and archery. The use of dogs, eagles and arrows were once essential for survival and herding in Central Asia, but no longer practice. Kirk's people have tried to keep the ancient art alive through this festival that began in 1997. Visitors can meet the Taigan dogs and watch as eagles obey their trainers' orders. And the highlight this year, an archery competition celebrating women's contribution to society, named after a legendary female archer. Uh, <laughs> These hunting techniques are still popular with locals, who now use them to teach their children how to interact with large dogs and birds of prey. But with little awareness of Salbaran outside Kyrgyzstan, festival organisers hope this event will attract visitors to the country and give the wider world a better understanding of their ancient way of life. Nowadays, Kyrgyzstan want to be real Kyrgyzstan, not to forget our roots, not to forget traditions. And today we have a short program to sh show all aspects of Salborun for our tourists. Visitors can further learn about Kirk's culture through shopping. Artisanal stores offer traditional crafts and fabrics. Good. Applause, please. And as the festival draws in crowds to honour this ancient way of life, it is also ensuring the traditions can continue to thrive for future generations. Dolphin Chen and Rosie Greninger for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more of our stories. Finally, take a look at Taiwanese drag star Nymphia Wind performing at the Cultural Olympiad in Paris. I'm Yvonne Yang, take care, and I'll see you next time. Yeah,